for a preponderance to the femoral uh, condyle okay. is that we have the patient positioned with a leg holder, which holds the, the femur in position. We have the table broken so that the knee uh, can move freely. And this way, if when we make an arthrotomy, the, the lesion is staring right at us, we operate with the knee bend sitting. If it's not we're, we're, if it's not staring right at us and this is the ideal position, then we can remove the top of the leg holder. We can take the leg into more flexion and place the foot onto a mayo um, in order to give us hyperflexion. She had a previous ACL. You can see her bone patella tendon bone incision. Her femoral tunnel was a little vertical, uh, a lot vertical really, and then she went on to fail that. Uh, three or four months ago, I revised that and performed a hamstring ACL. You can see my hamstring incision and my scope portals. And uh, we now have her with a stable knee, but she had a medial femoral condyle lesion, which we treated with a chondroplasty at her last surgery. She's continued to be symptomatic, and now we are gonna, uh, going to perform a, a cartilage restoration procedure with prochondrix. So what we'll do today is perform an arthroscopy again to begin with, evaluate the lesion, clean out the gutters, make sure that there's no um, other significant issues with the knee, make sure that it remains a unipolar defect, and then I'll make an arthrotomy around her medial portal, we'll find the lesion, and then we'll do the cartilage restoration procedure with the prochondrix. So we can see her medial femoral condyle lesion, but this is all just fibrous tissue which has filled in and it extends all the way to the back. I'm showing here with the probe the, uh, the area around the lesion itself. You can see that's the front, that's the, the um, uh, medial aspect, this is the posterior aspect. There's our ACL graft which is intact. And you can see where that is in relation to the cartilage lesion. And I'm going to clean this lesion up with a uh, shaver uh, in a moment, but you can see all this fibrous tissue which is sitting within that medial uh, lesion. Here's the shaver, and we're cleaning it up. Just removing the fibrous tissue, and we're going to uh, get an idea of the size. So now we're extending our medial portal into a medial parapatellar arthrotomy. Simply extend uh, the portal. We're coming adjacent to the patella tendon. We use retractors so that we can see our arthrotomy being performed. And once our arthrotomy is performed, you can see that we have a view of the femoral condyle. We'll put a retractor into the notch, typically something like a homan, which will pull our patella and our patella tendon. And here we're using sizers to size the lesion. So here I'm taking the 15 millimeter sizer up against the lesion, and I like the way that this fits. So we're going to use the corresponding instrumentation. I'm checking the positioning of where I want my graft to sit. And I'm taking the pouring tube over the lesion, rotating it back and forth to reach the depth of the bone. And now I'm placing the drill within the tube with the T-handle on it, and I'm rotating the T-handle 360 degrees, removing the fibrous tissue and preparing the lesion. There's usually, even after using the instrumentation, there's usually still some tissue which needs to be cleaned up. And I take a curette to remove the remaining calcified cartilage layer. The instrumentation does most of the work, but the fine touches are done with a small curette. The next step is to perform a microfracture, and you can see I've done that here. Now we use a bit of suction to help dry off the underlying layer in preparation for applying fibrin glue. And you can see here now that I'm using fibrin glue and applying this to the base of the microfracture site. And now we're ready to place the prochondrix graft. 
So I'm holding the prochondrich graft carefully with a pair of forceps. We're going to place it with the laser etching down. Make sure that we like the way that it sits. If we don't like the way that it sits, we can always trim it so that it sits nice and flush at the base of this lesion. And now I'm taking the fiber and glue and placing it on top of the prochondrich graft. I'm also going to cycle the knee a few times after I allow the glue, the fiber and glue to cure and set, just to ensure that my graft is sitting nicely and that I'm comfortable with uh, the fact that it's not going to dislodge and is stable. You can see that this incision is three centimeters long. Uh, you could really probably do this arthroscopically, but the fiber and glue management becomes difficult, which is why my preference is to do it through a small arthrotomy like this one.